Welcome back to another episode. Today we're in my fishing room and I'm gonna run through every single piece of tackle that I've got in this room from my lure wall, my rods, my reels, everything in this room. So we're gonna go through it and because I do so many different types of fishing, I've obviously gotta have so much different bits and pieces. So if you guys have been long time followers of the channel, you would have seen I fish for everything from whiting through to mackerel, jigging out in the boat, deep dropping, pretty much everything. So to be able to do that, it's not like one style of fishing where you're gonna have a couple of outfits and a couple of different types of lures or whatever the case may be sort of thing. There is a lot of gear in this room and there is so many different styles of fishing and there's a bit of everything to be able to do that. So because space is limited, um, I don't have room to fill a tackle store and I don't want to have that much stuff. It's too much to carry around because being majority land based, I've got to carry anything that I want to catch, I've got to carry the gear to be able to do that. So I've tried my best to condense everything down into smaller, easier to manage, only sort of necessity packs, I suppose you'd be the easiest way to say it. So while I do have a massive selection of lures and they're all in cases in front of me in the cabinet here and I do have a huge array of stuff, I've condensed it down into the things that I find are the most important and they're the things that I've got in here. And then there's also a big enough selection that if I'm going on a trip and I know that I'm going to be rock fishing on the south coast that weekend, I can grab stuff to do just that quite easily without having to take anything that I don't need. And I also don't have this room full of stuff that I'm never going to use. So let's get into it. I'm going to run through everything that's in this room and let's not mess around and we're going to start uh, probably the rods. No way. I'll go reels first. I've got less reels than I do rods. So there's a pretty good reason for that. I don't want to be having a separate reel for every single rod that I've got, otherwise that cabinet wouldn't be able to fit anything else in it. And I'd also have a lot of things that I don't need. So I've got reels that do multiple uses and can go on different rods. So we'll run through the reels first. That'll give you a bit of a rundown what I use each of my reels for, and then I can show you what rods they go on and how each of those rods is different. Top shelf, I've got my larger spinning reels. So this is mostly what I use for rock fishing. This is all my 8,000 and larger size spin reels. Middle shelf here, I've got everything from 2,000s up to 5,000s in here. So this is all my light and medium spin reels. So this is from six to 30 pound. This here is 40 to 100 pound. Then on the bottom shelf, I've got my overhead reels. So I've got my bait caster, I've got my heavy overhead and my digging overhead with a lot of line on it. Sweet. Start with my two favorite reels. These are my Soul Tigers. Um, if I had it my way, I would most certainly have an entire cabinet full of these things. I just absolutely love them. There is a few things, a uh, few reasons why I've only got two of these and I'll run through a bit more with the other reels why I've got that, but we'll run through what I use these ones for. So. First of all, I have a 14,000. So, 14,000 extra high speed. This is my um, P6 to 8 GT reel. I run P6 on this normally. Um, do run 50 pound on it and have spun for mackerel. Uh, I do that if I absolutely need to. So if I'm going on like a mackerel trip or something like that, I'll run just 50 pound line on this reel. Um, I don't run anything heavier. But if I'm fishing south coast, this is gonna have P6 or 80 pound line on it. And this is what I'm gonna use for casting lures at Samson Fish most of the time. Have used it for groper and things like that. You would have seen um, my mate Alessandro got his huge groper on this reel with P6 line. So my 8,000. 8,000 is a bit of a weird size, so this reel has a specific purpose. So this is almost a single purpose reel for me. It's one of the very few that I've got. So when I'm spinning for mackerel, casting off the rocks, you your days are spent just doing as many casts as possible. So you want to make that as easy as you can. You don't want to be making that difficult, so the more casts that you can put in that day, the better chance you've got of catching a mackerel. So this reel, has 40 pound on it, makes it lighter, easier to cast, still has enough pulling power to fight and land big mackerel, but with the 40 pound on the 8,000 size, it's a smaller and lighter reel, easier to cast all day. I can put casts out for hours and hours and hours on end and increases my chances of catching mackerel tuna, things like that spinning off the rocks. So so I have got Kingfish and Samson fish on this reel, but it is, I've lost more than I've won on it. So 
As with anything on the south coast, go heavy, overkill, there's no such thing as too light. Majority of this reel just gets used for casting for mackerel off the rocks up north. These are my 10,000 size reels. So I've got a Saltus 10,000H and a BGMQ 10,000H as well. So high speed reels in this size I really, really like. Um, low speed reels, only real use in this size I would think would be sort of jigging or uh, surf fishing, maybe winding bo uh, baits up when you're out in the boat or something like that. So majority of my fishing being land based, high speed is quite fine. Saltus reel, um, I much prefer this over the BG, I'm not going to lie, but it is also more expensive than the BG, so take from that whatever you want. Now, the BG, I certainly wouldn't cast lures with it all day. It's not as refined as the Saltus for it. So the Saltus, I've spun lures with all day, quite happy with it. Very, very good reel, casting lures, feels very nice, got a really good drag. Everything's really, really good on it. The BG just doesn't quite have that feel that the Saltus does. So it is a lot cheaper, it doesn't have the nicer bail, and it's got a couple of little things that just aren't quite as nice. So for me, the handles as well, um, you'll see the Saltus has got the metal ball knob versus the rubber T knob on the BG. I was gonna beach fish and spend a lot of time in the surf or just cast baits around and it's just sit and wait. Two reels, same size, same pretty much everything. Both are filled with 50 pound braid. Um, this one I use a little bit more for my spinning metals and lures and things like that. Um, a bit more of an all-rounder. This one I would certainly use more for just sort of bait fishing, surf fishing, things like that. And I've got some decent fish doing that with this reel. My last in the big reel category. Now, this reel is a must-have this size for me. So the 18 to 20,000 size, I need to have. I need to have a P10 reel if I'm going to be chasing huge groper, Samson fish, things like that on the south coast rocks. So this reel is a must for that. But it's also, because it's such a large reel, it's got massive line capacity. So I've got this at the moment, it's spooled with 50 pound braid, and I've used that for helium ballooning. And this reel has landed a bloody good macro off the rocks up a quabba. Um, it's, yeah, it's got some very, very good fish so far. Uh, big groper, things like that. But I definitely need that 18,000, 20,000 size reel to be able to fit 100 pound line and chase those really big groper. Value for money, I would, wouldn't go past the Saltus. Absolutely love them. They're great reels. Been very, very reliable for me so far, both my Saltus. And yeah, no complaints out of, with them at all. So next shelf down now, we're on medium size, medium and small size spin reels. So we'll start from the largest of them, working down to the smallest. First up, we've got the 30 pound reel. So this is my 5000 uh, LT Certate. Um, awesome reel, I've used it a lot, it's getting very tired now. Uh, this reel has had a very hard life. I've certainly pushed it well harder than what it should have ever been used. Um, it spent most of its life on full drag catching things that it probably wasn't designed to stop. 30 pound reels, I use this mostly for throwing plastics off the rocks, um, use it for throwing small stick baits, this is my Taylor, my Spangled Emperor reel, things like that. I've spun for mackerel with it and landed mackerel with this reel as well. It's sort of my, always my go-to in between size. So while I've got my 40 and 50 pound and heavier that I use for most things, if I'm casting lures, this is my all day, every day cast a lure sort of reel. I can pretty much stop most things on this if I really give it a good go, but it's light enough to use all day and also get the smaller things and work lures really, really well. That's an important thing. So. While I might be able to throw a lure and work it on 80 pound, it might not swim as nice or anything like that. And a 30 pound just makes lures swim so nicely in that sort of 20 to 60 gram range that I seem to throw a lot of, especially with soft plastics with the bigger jig heads and things like that. So I'm hoping to upgrade this soon to one of the new SW Certates, um, either the 5 or the 6000, because like I said, this one's getting a bit tired. It's had a very hard life. Um, and I feel like the SW model being a little bit heavier duty is a little bit more suited to what I use this reel for. So that's my 5000 Certate 30 pound outfit. Next size down is the 4000s. So this is my 20 pound outfits. Um, recently just got one of the new Caldia LTs. So this is a 4000 CXH. This will probably be 
what I'll use mostly for 20 pound these days. Um, I used to use my 4000 size a lot before I got the 5000 and um, I find I use the 5000 more. 4000 is a great size, that's my Caldia. The other reel is my Exist. So they've just released a new model, this is the 2018 Exist, the first of the monocoque LT ones. This was one of the first ones that was here in Australia. I ordered it the second that it arrived and it was one of the first ones that got delivered. It's had a very hard life. Um, this will be getting retired shortly and like I said, I'll just be using the Caldia mostly instead. Um, don't use this 4000 size as much as I used to, that's for sure. Still use it, definitely handy to have that 20 pound sort of size um, in there when 30 pounds a little bit too heavy or you need to work lures a little bit lighter or a little bit more finesse, something like that. And it's a good sort of jump in between the next size down, which is the 10 pound size. So we'll grab that one now. Now we've got 3000, so this is my 10 pound reel. So I've got a Luvius 3000D for this. Um, I wanted the D model because I wanted a lot of line on this reel. So the 10 pound I find is the sort of thing that I throw a little bit too bigger lures than I probably should on it. So I'm throwing four inch lures, three to four inch plastics on it, or sort of 15 to 20 gram stick baits. They're small enough that you get what you're actually after. So I'd use this for Taylor, um, up in Shark Bay, uh, small estuary cod, things like that. Um, I use it on South Coast for Skippy. Just sort of general all around smaller sort of things. Um, you would have seen, I use this, this reel exclusively for pretty much all of my snapper that I caught up in Shark Bay. The reason why I went the deep model is because I wanted a lot of line on it. Um, this has got 300 meters of 10 pound J braid on it. So I wanted a lot of line because this is the sort of outfit that you'll throw a small lure and you'll hook something ridiculously big. And if you don't have enough line, um, especially with the salt water fishing, you're just going to get spooled. So I've gone for the deeper reel so that I can fit a lot more line on. So if I do hook something really big, I've actually got a chance of landing it. Chance is pretty slim, but the chance is there. So it's just something that I always like to have that 10 pound and have a lot of line on it because I find that I have hooked some really, really big fish by accident. And having all of that line on it, I've managed to land some crazy, crazy things on 10 pound gear that I probably shouldn't have landed but because I had the line there, I managed to be able to do it. Second last of the spin reels. This is my eight pound size. So this is a 2500 Certate. Um, this is the SLP Works custom body one. Real fancy black gold, heap of little trimmings and stuff that I've added to it. Like the little red pieces on the knob and that. So really, really cool reel. Um, I really enjoy using this one. So I use it a lot for it's probably overkill for most of what I use it for. It's light enough that I can fish for whiting and uh, brim, all my ultralight fish, or what I consider ultralight anyway. And it's still heavy enough that I can throw this at, say, the snapper. I've landed a lot of tailor and things like that on it. So it's a great sort of in between. I can be throwing tiny, tiny little three gram lures up to something sort of 10 to 15 grams. Pretty much been using this for all of my giant herring fishing here in Perth. It's also the reel that I use for big yellowfin brim in Shark Bay. So one of my goals is to try and get a 50 centimeter one on film, show you guys. And this is the reel that'll be able to do it because it's light enough to be able to throw a tiny little two and a half inch grub or a small um, lure for a brim to be able to eat it. But it's also got enough power that I can stop something like that if I do hook it. So this eight pounds is a good reel for that. Last of my spin reels is my smallest one. This is a 2000 Kicks. So this reel, I've gone a mid-range reel because I don't use it a hell of a lot. Um, it's a reel that I use pretty much just for whiting and brim. Small little fish like that. Um, I do a bit of it, so it's definitely handy to have it, but I could quite easily get away with using the 2500 instead. This is sort of an in-between. I wouldn't use a great deal, but it's nice to have. Um, it's also, uh, that's why I've gone for a mid-range reel for this one rather than something high-end because I just can't justify something expensive when I don't use it a great deal like I do with my Certate, which I use a hell of a lot being the 2500 size and the eight pound. So this one's got six pound on it um, on the 2000 kicks. Overhead reels, these I don't use 
massively, um, but I do have high-end ones for certain reasons, which I'll go through. So, Baycaster's just sort of a bit of a muck around for me. Um, I don't really have any use for it. I'm quite happy using my spin reels for all that kind of stuff. But I've got a Rayoga 1016H, so the smaller of the Rayogas. Um, I wanted a bait caster just for the Mulloway in the river that I fished down in Albany. Um, so try and catch my bait casters pretty handy. This, surprisingly, because I don't have a dedicated slow pitch jigging reel for out in the boat um, at the moment, I like using overhead rather than spin for slow pitch jigging. And this, along with the rod that I've got for it, for some reason just works and it's much too long it probably shouldn't work but for some reason jigging with it is just easy this is my bait cast so this has got 20 pound on it uh probably a little bit overkill for this reel but because i do use it for demersal jigging catching sort of 8 10 12 kilo jewfish quite regularly on it and also the mulloway that i catch on it uh and hopefully one day i'll get to use this for barramundi which is more what it was supposed for but we'll get there one day that's the bait caster Next reel is another one of the few single purpose reels that I've got now that I think about it. This reel only has one use. This is my Star Drag Soltega overhead. So this is a Soltega 35NSJ. So it's a slow jig model. It's got the long uh, big T handle on it. Um, Star Drag, like I said, it's the narrow model. So it is quite narrow. Um, you want this for your overhead jigging. You don't really want a really wide reel because it makes it really difficult to lay your line back on, the reel will rock on the rod and things like that while you're using it. So the reason why I wanted this reel is because I do a little bit of deep dropping. Um, and by deep dropping, I mean dropping into 200 to 600 meters of water. So my mate Rene does um, a fair bit of it around the coast and I spend a fair bit of time on his boat chasing super deep fish like Harpooka, uh, bass groper, we're hoping to find blue eye traveller, which is what this is ultimately set up for. So we fish for the super deep fish a fair bit. We've been getting good success with the harpooka. And even though this has only got 20 pound line on it, it's um, I've gone 20 pound. Line capacity is obviously number one. You're not gonna reach the bottom if you've only got 300 meters of line, you're fishing in 300 meters of water. So line capacity is number one. Number two, the thinner the line is, the easier it'll cut through the water. So the thicker the line is, the more it's going to drag, and you're going to need to use a heavier jig to be able to get to the bottom. So all of this is for jigging and manual wind in those sort of depths. I'm dropping six to 800 gram jigs most of the time on this, and 20 pound might seem completely far too light for this style of fishing. You can put a fair amount of pressure on 20 pound, and we've landed some big, big fish on like here, jigging like this. So single purpose reel, can't really use it for much else other than deep jigging. I do use it for demersal jigging here and there, but because of the way that I've got the handle set, I've got it set to the longer of the two options. It makes it quite uncomfortable to use in 30, 40 meters of water, like we'd be fishing for jewfish and things like that. So I try and leave this reel for fishing in 90 meters or more. Last reel is my big overhead. This one is a Soltega LD50. Now, pretty much single use reel again for me. Um, I will be spooling this up with a mono top shot and using it for trawling um, and for marlin hopefully at the end of this year. So it does have another use that I am planning on doing with it. So, but my main use for this reel is helium ballooning. So you would have seen, um, I've done a few videos on uh, how we helium balloon, and this is the reel that I ultimately use most for that. So sending out balloons and big baits off the rocks to try and catch Spanish mackerel, tuna, things like that. So this reel gets spooled up with 50 pound braid, and there's about a kilometer underneath, um, 150 meters of 24 kilo mono, and this is what I use for sending out those big baits off the cliffs. That's all my reels. All right, let's get into that way, rods. We'll go through the rods now. So the rods, there is less reels than there is rods. So rods, I've got a fair few that are for specific purposes. So I like having um, certain 
styles of things. I like my rods to do certain things if I'm working different kinds of lures, things like that. So I'm pretty picky with ro what rods I use. But in terms of reels, 20 pound reels is 20 pound reel. Like it's not really going to matter that much. I generally go high end reels for the ones that I use the most because I don't want them to let me down, and cheaper reels for the ones that I don't use um, a lot of, like the 2000 kicks that I've got. So I try and stick to that. Um, rods is a bit different. I'm very picky. If I've got a rod that I use for a certain thing, I like it to do that quite well. Um, there's certain styles of fishing that don't really matter too much, like casting um, vibes at whiting. I do that a fair bit. You can cast them on anything. It doesn't really matter. The rod action doesn't really affect it. But my squid rod, for example, I find using a dedicated squid rod, um, my catches are so much more than if I was just using any other rod. You can work a jig better, um, which means you're going to get more hookups and then you've got more chance of landing it because of the style of rod and things like that. So certain rods will have certain purposes and I do like to have them doing um, the right thing when I'm working lures, especially with lures mostly. So let's jump into it. I'll run through the rods. Um, I'll take you down there and show you which ones I've got. and what I use them for and what reels go on them and why. We'll start off with this back side of the rack here. This is the rods that I don't use all the time, so I've chucked them over the back here. There is a couple of rods here, um, which I just can't get rid of. Um, as you know, I use exclusively dial for my rods and reels. That's enough blabbing. I'll go through these rods that I've got. So start off with the boat rods. Here I've got a Demon Blood. This is my Demon Blood P2-3 to three, six foot jigging rod, so this is a rod that I use off the kayak. Um, my Certate 5, 5000 goes on that with the 30 pound braid. My light bait caster rod, uh, this is a 5-10 to 10 kilo bait caster, um, 6 foot 8. This one is my light bait caster rod, I use this with the Ryoga. This is great, I've used this for Taylor a fair bit, um, good for Mulloway, a little bit lighter. Um, it does have quite a short butt on it, so it does sort of suit one-handed use, which I don't do a great deal of, which is why I find myself using the heavier rod, even though it is overkill for most things. I've got two baitcaster rods. My other baitcaster rod is the Commander. It's a little bit longer. This is a light swim bait model of the Commanders, the duck fin model. So this is 8 to 15 kilos and 7 foot 2. Um, does have a little bit longer butt section on it. This is the rod that I use for demersal jigging. Um, I didn't think it would do it, but it does it really, really well. Really enjoy it. I have caught some amazing fish on this rod and I absolutely love it. And because of that, I find myself grabbing this one over the other baitcaster rod pretty much every time when I go to grab the baitcaster out and use it for something. It is more, a bit of a more expensive rod, but certainly worth it. Um, yeah, absolutely love it. This is my deep drop rod that I've been using for my Hapuka and things like that with the Saltiga 35 on it. This is a Saltiga 6 foot 1 medium light P2-3, I think, yep, P2-3. So this rod is certainly not the best suited for what I do with the deep dropping. It is completely saturated with a 6 to 800 gram jig on it. But it does it. Being a Saltiga, it does have a lot of power. If you were using one of the lower end rods of this spec, um, I don't think you'd have a fun time with it. But this rod surprisingly pulls through and pitches those big jigs like that. And then being very soft, it means I've got a lot of control over the fish and the lunges and things like that. So surprisingly, it does the job. And this is with the 20 pound on it for deep dropping and have landed all the hapuka and the grey band and stuff like that for such a light rod. This is my heavy overhead boat rod, P6-8 to eight Demon Blood. Um, this one is jigging for Samson fish, live baiting for them. This one won't get a great deal of use, so you'll see with these, the rods that I don't use a lot or aren't relying on, I do go for the mid-range ones, um, so like the two Demon Bloods. There's no point having 700 plus dollar rods for something that I don't use all the time and it's not really going to make too much of a difference for me to use them from time to time with the mid-range ones. So Demon Blood's certainly a good compromise. On this side, this is the rods that I use pretty much all the time. Um, these are my 
rock fishing rods, which is mostly what I do, and then these ones are my light tackle and some other special purpose sort of ones down this end. So we'll start up here, these two, this is the Spartan P4 to 6 10 foot. Um, this one has my 10,000 size reels on it or my 14,000. So if I'm fishing up north, I'll have my 10,000 H's on it and 50 pound. Um, and if I'm fishing on the south coast for Samson fish, this will be running P6 with my 14K Saltiga on it. So this is my medium heavy uh, rock fishing rod and running 50, to, 50 pound to P6 sort of thing on it. The next one is my heavy, heavy land base rod. This one is the S85 Spartan P6 to 8. So this rod gets used on my 18K um, Saltus. I use this for ballooning. This is the one that got me my big mackerel up at um, Cobba. And if I'm not using it for ballooning up north, then it's got 100 pound line on it and I'm fishing on the south coast for big Samson fish, big groper with this. This is my heaviest um, rock fishing rod. Next one, this is the rod that my 8000 uh, Saltiga goes on. This is sort of a single purpose rod. This is my mackerel spinning rod. That's what I wanted this for and that's what I use it for. As I explained with the reel, um, when it comes down to mackerel, the more cast that you can put in, the better your chances of catching a fish. So this rod being a little bit lighter, I originally had the Spartan and I found it a little bit too heavy to cast with repetitively all day in the 50 pound. It just, my arms would get sore and I'd find I'd be stopping a lot more having breaks between casting. So I got this Sea Jigger 325XH. Um, it's the heaviest of the Sea Jigger models and it suits the 40 pound and the 8000 Saltiga perfectly. It has plenty of power to overpower mackerel and get them past the sharks but also light enough that you can cast with it all day with 85 gram metals or whatever you lures you're chasing mackerel with. Going to the next one, I've got three sea jiggers and I love all three of them. This is the sea jigger that I use the most. This is my 315M. This is the one that my 5000 Sirtate goes on, my 30 pound reel. So this is what I use for casting plastics. This is what I use for bait fishing, for snapper, my spangled emperor, things like that. Um, I have used this for pretty much everything. If I'm if I've had enough of casting the heavy gear for the day, I'll grab my 5000 Sirtate and go and throw a plastic around. Certainly an amazing, amazing rod. Very, very crisp in the tip, unlike the next one, which I'll explain. Really like the 315 Sea Jigger. It's, yeah, absolutely amazing rod for 30 pound casting those sort of 30 to 60 gram lures. Great, great rod for that sort of stuff for land base. I certainly grab this over just about anything else when I'm, when I'm casting uh, mid lures, mid size lures. The last of my sea jiggers, which is my last of my true rock fishing rods, um, is my 305 ML sea jigger. This is the lightest of the sea jiggers. This is the one that my 4000s go on, so the Caldera the Exist, and run 20 pound on it. Being that this is more of a Japanese sort of rod, and they have their they're fishing for their sea bass, the 315 and the 325 are more suited to your small kingfish, so they're a little bit faster rods. And a little bit stiffer in the tip whereas this 305 is a definitely a sea bass rod it's a lot softer so some people might not like that i personally aren't the biggest fan when i'm trying to work stick baits and things like that um great for plastics but being 20 pound it's normally a bit too light for whatever i hook so i end up using the 30 pound anyway but it's a little bit soft in the tip for me i'd like something a little bit crisper Still great for Taylor and stuff like that, but I find myself grabbing the 315 just because it feels a little bit nicer. The next rods are all uh, eight foot or shorter. So I'll start with dedicated squid rod. This one, single purpose only. Um, it is uh, Emeraldus MX, uh, the 86 ML. So eight foot six squid rod, dedicated land based squidding rod. So this one has the Kicks or the Surtate 2500, I put it on it. Being the MX model, it is one of the higher end with the titanium guides. It is super, super light. The Surtate is a little bit heavy for it. I would like to have a Luvius instead that makes it a little bit lighter, but that's just being really fussy. This rod is great as a squid rod. I find since I've gone up to a really nice squid rod like this, 
my catches of squid have gone up. Um, I'm able to work jigs a lot better, cast them further, and I'm landing more of what I hook. I'm not pulling the jigs out of squid and things like that. So if you're thinking about getting a dedicated squid rod, certainly give it a give it a go. Go and have a look at some because they do make a big difference. So if you do a lot of squidding, they will increase your catches, I've found anyway. You don't really have to go crazy crazy, but if you want to increase your chances and you do a lot of squid fishing, um, definitely look at getting a dedicated squid rod. So I really, really enjoy spending a lot of my winter chasing squid and I'm certainly happy that I bought a rod to suit that. Five rods left, so this one is my lightest. It's the TD Hyper um, 744 Ultralight. This one I use pretty much for whiting and brim, that's pretty much it. Because I don't use this a great deal, that's why I haven't gone for a super expensive one because there's no need. Great rod to fit with the 2000 kicks on it and 6 pound and casting really really small little lures. Next one up is my land based brim rod. This is my Infeet Z model, it's the 782 um, light spin. This is the, the Cranky Crab model, but because it's 748, I use this a lot because it's a great length for land based. I've been using this for my giant herring, uh, I've been using it for big brim and snapper up at Shark Bay. So this is what my 8 pound goes on. It can cast a little bit heavier um, weights than what your normal brim rod would, up to sort of 10 grams, but I've been casting quite comfortably up to sort of 15 grams on this. I find it a really good in between from that ultralight uh, TD Hyper. Next rod is my 10 pound one. So this rod is what my Luvius 3000 goes on. This is a Rebellion 7 foot 4 medium light spin. Very very fast action rod which at first I didn't think that I'd like it but I really really like it. I use this for my smaller tailor, um, the snapper on the flats and a lot of the sort of um, my flats and shallows fishing for a little bit bigger fish. I've actually landed some big Mulloway up to about 15 kilos on this rod as well, so awesome rod. Second last is my shorter 20 pound rod. So this is a TD Zero, uh, seven foot two medium heavy. So this is a four to 10 kilo rod, which is what I use for 20 pound. While I've got the land based ones, which is my sea jiggers for 20 pound when I'm casting lures at Taylor and Spangled Emperor, things like that. If I need a shorter rod to be fishing in a river, or I don't need the really long rod like when I'm fishing around Shark Bay, or um, casting for salmon where, where it's quite calm, or off a jetty or something like that, I'll find I'll use this rod instead. Last rod is pretty much the same as the TD Zero is for 20 pound, but this is for 30 pound. So this is a TD Black. So this is eight foot medium heavy, um, which I use my 30 pound on, my 5000 Certate. I've used this for plastics off the cliffs quite comfortably when I don't need to cast super far. Um, used it for Mulloway in calm water and for um, Spangled Emperor, all sorts of bits and pieces. So it's just when I need a shorter rod for 30 pound. That's gone through all of the rods and reels that I use and what I use them for. So since I went through that bit first, I know it dragged on, but that sort of gives you an understanding of um, all the rest of the gear that I've got and what I sort of use it for. So there's a pretty key thing that when I'm packing gear um, for trips, because I do have so much stuff, I, I've got a pretty simple rule that I can sort of do for myself, is I, take, I pick the rods and reels I want to take first, and once I've got them sorted, then I select my lures and whatever else I want to take. And the question I ask myself is, can I throw it on the rods and reels that I've got? If I can't throw it, there's no point bringing it. Basically limit it down to what am I fishing for? Um, if I'm fishing for a certain type of fish, what gear do I need for it? And then I ask myself, do I have the rods and reels with me that can cast that stuff? If no, then there's no point bringing it and I might as well just leave it here. So anyway, we'll start running through all the rest of the stuff. I'll start with the lure wall because this is my pride and joy, this bad boy. This lure wall, um, it's just made up of some of the metal pegboard sheeting from Bunnings. I've just screwed it to the wall. Start with, I've got my little shoulder pack and my wading net. My big net lives here as well. This is all jig heads in this container. So that's all my soft plastic jig heads, my big, big ones. As you'll see, as we run through that shelf there, everything is sort of set up into little packs, which makes it a bit easier, but I'll go through that soon. So 
some random selection of soft plastics here. These are non-bait junkies. These are all my bait junkies. So they're all seven inch ones and 6.2 minnows. This is all my broom size ones, my two and a halfs up to fours. There's a few more there, all my little two and a halfs. Um, these are five inch minnows. I use them pretty much. That's my, my go-to whenever it sort of comes to that. Here I've got some lures that I haven't taken out of boxes yet. So I've got some lures for some projects I haven't done yet. Some spares there, a heap of nomads. Heaps of bits and pieces. Move up, next, bait hooks. So selection of bait hooks from BKK. I go through these surprisingly fast. So it may seem like there is a lot there, but I go through them pretty quick. Um, jigging and lure hooks. These are random selections. So what have I got there? There's a lure hook that can go on that hook. This is like split rings, swivels, crimps, heaps of stuff. You can see there. So just random bits and pieces that I need. Next one, that's all medium sized trebles. That's all small trebles. Bait hooks here. There's a few packets of them. Come to some more bait hooks here. Uh, soft plastic jig heads, single strand wire, spare leader and line lives here. And that's all of my packet stuff. So that's just sort of leftovers, metals, Mac baits, GT ice creams, um, duo minnows here for casting. So this is mostly my mackerel sort of spinning stuff and the smaller metals above it. Medium sized stick baits, small to medium sized stick baits, uh, small metals for herring, medium metals in between, bigger than that. Small uh, giant herring lures or pencils, sort of like your five to 10 gram lures little small minnows, small stick baits up to 20 grams, bunch more small stick baits up to 20 grams, small poppers and floating lures. Uh, this is a bunch of minnows here. So this is everything with a bib, 20 or something lures there. My mackerel lures with a bib, the big duo fang shads. There's my vibes. There's a bunch in there. This is big lures with bibs and random stick baits and poppers and this starts getting up into that heavier sort of stuff so this is PE3 plus lures um, some without hooks up there and then all of my mackerel mad scads which I love and then all of my GT lures up there so that's all 80 gram plus stuff up there so that is the lure wall ran through from bottom to top cabinet here I've got a spare mono line, I use this for top shot, also use it for making rigs and things like that. So there's a whole heap of mono leader lines and stuff like that in there. Um, leaders, I've got them all labeled in the little tubs, so 20 pound and under, 80 pound, between 20 and 80 pound. And then this one's for everything over 80. So this is my big groper stuff, mostly what I use. And then all my light stuff's there. So moving down, rod wraps. I use these all the time to wrap my rods. Um, my rods always live in their bags when I'm out and about, and then the rod wraps hold them all together, keep them organized. So I've got some of my deep drop jigs here, six to 900 grams. More random bits and pieces. All right, bottom layer, we've got heap of glow sticks for the rods and slide clips. Um, I use these a lot, obviously, as you know, I do a lot of slide baiting. There's some weighted ones in there as well. I'm hoping to use those this year for some slide baiting off the beach, but we'll see how we go. Gimbal, don't often use it, but it's there if I need it. And then my sinker box down there. So I've got all my grapnels, all my sinkers that I use. So massive selection there. Below that, I've got the rest of my jigs. So I've got some of my Samson fish jigs there. And then there's all my demersal jigs. There's 30 or 40 of them or so there. All right, keep moving on. Bottom of the reel cabinet here has all the reel bags. So all my reels, when they come out of this cabinet, they get put away in their bags and then they get packed into backpacks or whatever like that. So all of my gear is always in its bags. My rods are always in their rod bags and then rod wrapped together. All the reels are put in backpacks and things like that. So they're protected. I always do try my best to look after my gear. So rods get washed after every single use. I get taken into the shower with me to um, get all the salt water off them. 
Reels the same, they get rinsed in the shower as well, and then they get left out, obviously like this in the rooms, so that they don't end up with water staying in them or anything like that. There's no good packing them away if they're wet, um, and then the water will sit there and cause corrosion and things. So they're left out to dry out, stay dry, and then when I need to use them, they get put back in bags and then taken to wherever I go, used, brought home, washed as soon as I get home, and then put back as they are here. Got my desk set up, so here, there's a couple of important things. I've got my line spooler set up there and my spooler for the drill. So I can chuck my drill on there and put my spool and my reel in it. And I've got the line spooler there to put the line on at the tension. So I can, all my spin reels, I can spool up myself on this desk. Just got some random selection of lures here. My room's a bit of a mess. I'm making up some wire there. That'll be another video because I've had a heap of people ask me how I do my haywire twist. So I've got all the gear that I need there. So I'll sort that out in another video. This is one of my trays. This is pretty much my everyday tray. So this has got all my swivels in it that I use, snap clips, a few little like uh, worm hooks, split rings, solid rings, some singles, bait hooks here, um, parts to make pulley rigs, the tube for helium ballooning. There's normally ghost cotton in there as well and things, maybe a few selected little weights and stuff. So this is pretty much my everyday box that comes with me no matter where I go. And then from there, I've got this racking's got all the rest of my sort of um, specific bits and pieces and it's all pretty well organized. So down the bottom, I've got all my real boxes. Don't know why I keep them. Does everyone else keep theirs? Not overly sure, but got my real boxes there. Next one up, got some leftover real boxes. All my jet boil stuff for camping. Um, it's all my cooking stuff for camping. This section here, same thing. So I've got my, my uh, sleeping bag, my mattress, all the rest of my camping, hiking goodies. My tent's not here, it's in the shed at the moment, but that's all my hiking specific stuff in those two shelves there. Um, obviously my hiking boots, got them there as well. They can get out of there. Here's all my rod bags. So as I said, these get used pretty much every time that I take my rods out of the house. It's all rod bags. All right, moving up. Um, just got my HPA box here. This is what I've used when I go out in the boat. Generally what I use on my bigger trips and takes most of my, fits most of my loose gear and tackle and stuff like that. Some more random packaging. All my balloon rigs. So this is all for helium ballooning. And then there's all my balloons and leaders. So this is just all my helium ballooning specific stuff. This is all empty containers. So as I said, when I'm packing gear from the lure wall, I just grab one of these empty containers and then I take only what I need when I go fishing. So I don't want to be grabbing everything that's on this wall because it's just far too much stuff. So I've got these little containers to help things organize. So if I'm going just down south and I'm only going to be chasing Samson fish, I can fit everything in one of these trays or the deeper box pretty easily. If I'm taking small or little lures, these things are the best. You need to get some of these. So these little duo double sided trays. They have got individual slots and you can fit your little stick baits and pencils, minnows, whatever, jig heads, whatever you want in there. Super, super handy, double sided. You get a bunch of lures in them. These are awesome. I've got a few different sizes of them. I've got even more of them over there, which is in use at the moment, but there's heaps of different sizes. They fit up to sort of 150 mil lures. Over here, this is all my trays that I use all the time. Rim lures there, I've got a few double-sided trays of broom lures, whiting, flathead, whatever I'm sort of chasing. There's a, a few trays of them. Little pack with jig heads in it. So this is all my jig heads for my soft plastic fishing for brim, flathead, whiting, that kind of stuff. Go out. Slightly bigger ones. So this is my flat uh, snapper ones and there's a few more jig heads there. That's all assist hooks for when I'm jigging. Um, so everything from my Samson fish jigs, deep drop, all that kind of stuff. Jesus, I've got some stuff. Squid jigs, two double-sided trays, all my squid jigs. As I said, I love the double-sided trays for keeping things organized. Overflow hook box, so everything that doesn't live in that tray and is ex excess lives in this one. Another jig head tray. This is just another overflow of all my jig heads, all in this little 
uh, thin tray here. And then this is all my GT hooks here. So this is all my big trebles, big singles, all my hooks for those GT lures up there. All right, a um, few things over here. So I've got my hummingbird sounder for my kayak. Um, spare spools of line up there. So there's 30, 40, and 50 pound. Um, they're what I use most for most of my reels. So rather than ordering small spools of it all the time, I've just got big spools and it just find it so much easier. So I do have a fair bit of spare line, 50 pound. And then down here, down here I've got spools of line and these ones have all been labeled. If I've got it, there we go. So these spools have all been labeled. So the LD50, 50 pounds. So that's a full spool with the backing, everything. So I just wind the old line off and wind this new line on for a different sort of purpose. So there's some P10 there. There's some P8. I've got them all labeled anyway, spare 30 pound. So there's heaps of stuff in there. This is all line that I use on my reels for when I want to chop the uh, chop and change with the breaking strains of what's actually on the reel. So I'll change and put these ones on rather than throwing the line out every time or having a different reel for the same thing. So if I need different line on different reels, I can change it to suit quite easily. Heap of pre-made rigs here. So there's everything from slides through to some float rigs. There's everything in there. Bunch of pre-made rigs. Same with this drawer heap of pre-made rigs oh there's all my slides there so there's all my slide clips there's heaps so heap of rigs in there and then last drawer i've got this is a mess honestly there's there's factor there's greases pliers scissors knives oh there's my there's my ghost cotton <laughs> bit of heat shrink some cable ties yeah just random stuff anyway i'm not super super organized but Feels pretty good to finally get this video done and run through everything that I've got in this room. So there's a bit of a method to it though. I do get asked a lot of questions about the certain sort of rigging styles that I do and some of the reasons why I do things. So this is sort of a bit of an understanding um, and a bit of a start to a whole heap of how-to videos that I'm going to be doing. So I do get asked a lot of questions like, why does my ballooning combo have 24 kilo mono top shot to it and then a plat with a, a leader? Why not just run braid the whole way through? Something like that. Or my haywire twists with my wire that I've got over there. How do I do them, make them look neat and do it quickly? Because I only use my hands. I don't use one of the tools for it. So I just get lots of little questions about rigging and things like that. And for me, a lot of it's just second nature. I've just done it because it's trial and error and I'm kind of stuck in my ways and it's like that works for me and I don't really want to change it. But a lot of those things came about because I had something go wrong or something failed or I didn't like the way that something was done. So there's certainly no right or wrong way to do any of the things that I do, but there's a lot of thought sort of put in behind why things are done the way that they are. I kind of take it as second nature to me because I've done it so many times, but the way I look at it is that I want my rigging and everything to be perfect in every way that it can be because every time I hook a fish, I want to land it. I don't want to be losing things to gear failure. So having everything perfect, your rigging perfect, your knots perfect, little ways to do things, um, how I've set hooks up on, on lures for certain fish and reasons why I do things, they're all... I don't just sort of kind of guess very often. A lot of it is I, I do things a certain way because of something that's happened and a way that I've lost a fish. So while everyone's got different experiences, I'm, I'd like to sort of share mine because I do get asked a lot of questions about the rigging sort of stuff. So this is just a start of a run through. So give you a bit of an understanding of what I've got and why I use the certain bits and pieces I do and then it'll make a lot more sense as I go through a lot of little rigging things of why I use the gear that I do and why I do the little the little things that I think count for the the little fine details that in the end mean you're gonna hook more fish which then you're gonna land more fish because all your rigging's perfect and stuff like that. Anyway, that's enough of me blabbing on you probably sick of hearing my voice just like i am filming this i hate having to talk this much so 
If you've liked this video, please drop a comment below and let me know some of the little how-to um, details and rigging that you guys want to see. So I'm still going to be doing all the fishing videos, but I just want to start doing some of the little how-to videos in the fishing room here and show you some of the little tips and tricks that I've learnt along the way. And if I can help other people catch more fish, I'm more than happy to do that. So chuck some comments down below, let me know what other stuff you want to see, and thanks for coming on a tour of my fishing room.